Hey guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon here. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am going to be reacting to an episode of House MD. So I used to watch this episode many, many, many years ago before I was in medical school, I think. And I don't remember this episode entirely, but I watched it actually before I reacted to it because House MD can be a lot. And I wanted to kind of select the most interesting parts for you guys. I think that it's a great show and I'm excited to watch it with you guys. Please, if you're liking the content here, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right now. I'm going to give you a second to do it. Yeah, good. Okay, great. Let's get going. Thirty-eight-year-old female with loss of bladder control, blood in her urine, and a broken leg from collapsing at her wedding. Ampicillin for the UTI, shiny cast for the leg. You guys know Wilson's dating Amber? No. Wilson and Amber? I knew. I asked her out. I said she just started seeing someone. Cultures were negative for UTIs. No signs of previous trauma or STDs. Kidney cancer. CT was clean for tumors and kidney stones. I thought Amber scared you guys. She does, but she also has legs that go all the way up to Canada. So do Canadians. She doesn't even want to date one. Her sodium's low. Could be endometriosis in the bladder. Low sodium could also be from low food. Hasidic Jews fast on their wedding day. Or sodium was absorbed by a toxin already in her system. Is it just the legs, or did you detect something resembling a soul? She grew on me. If there's a toxin in her, it could be carbolic acid. I'm talking about the patient now. That much carbolic acid, someone would have had to poison her. Could have been a Cossack. This was 18th century Poland, and Cossacks were into household cleansers. Which is why it's more likely that the poisoner was poisony. Suicide's a sin. Corollary of people lies, people sin. In my world, people includes Jews. She was getting married. Hasidic women marry young so they can start pushing out little Hasidlings. 38 means a woman not on anyone's hot list being pushed onto a guy who's not on anyone's hot list. No way out, no way out. Endometriosis fits better than an epiphany that her life is meaningless. We should start her in AIs and do a cystoscopy to confirm. Fine. Check her innards for bad cells and her home for bad karma. Carbolic acid should be on the shelf right next to the regret and the self-loathing. Okay, so there's a lot going on in that episode. Clearly, House is preoccupied with Wilson and Amber dating, who are two other characters on the show. And so there's a woman, the patient presents with hematuria and loss of bladder control, two uh, things that which could point to a urologic issue. Or they couldn't. But the way that she presents it is obviously for drama because they want to come up with a differential, and she's not presenting all the information. So he says UTI, she says there's no UTI. He says kidney cancer, she says there's no kidney cancer. So anyways, they're pulling out stuff through the process of differential diagnosis. So this is something that we do, but typically you present the patient with their symptoms, their past medical history, their past surgical history, what meds they're on, what their exam was like, what their labs are, are there any other symptoms ongoing that are maybe related or maybe not related, and then you decide and determine a differential diagnosis. That's typically how it really happens. So let's talk for a second about hematuria and loss of bladder control. Hematuria is blood in the urine. When you see blood in the urine, it can be due to a number of reasons. And they basically all come from the kidneys or the plumbing that is related to the kidney. So it can be from the kidney parenchyma itself, and that can actually be due to kidney diseases that are innate to the kidney itself that may cause bleeding. It can be due to tumors or stones in the kidney. It can be due to any sort of abnormality in the tube that drains the kidney, which is the ureter, and this can be due to stones or any sort of obstruction or cancer or things of that nature. It can also be due to something in the bladder. So it could be a mass in the bladder. It could be a stone in the bladder, or it could be due to something in the outlet or the urethra. And it could be due to a number of things. In men, most often it's prostate issues. And in women, it can be due to atrophy or things like that. So in hematuria, you want to rule out the bad stuff. You want to rule out stuff that you don't want to miss. So that includes cancers or stones because those things can ultimately cause bigger problems. So what we do for patients with hematuria is we get what's called a CT urogram or a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. And we look at the kidneys both with and without contrast to see if there's any masses. We see the contrast actually draining down into the ureters so that we can see them light up if there's any abnormalities or what's called filling defects. 
And then we can see some of the bladder and as well as the size of the prostate in men or other things that might be anatomically pushing on the bladder. The bladder is not perfectly seen on CT, so we also do what's called a cystoscopy, which they mentioned here. A cystoscopy is looking in the bladder with a camera. This is the best way to assess for bladder tumors, and that's why we do it because we want to find bladder cancer if there is any bladder cancer. And also we would get a urinalysis and urine culture to make sure there's no infection. And on the urinalysis, we can find some information about whether this is likely to be a plumbing disease, meaning it's from the tubing that drains the kidney, or a kidney parenchymal disease, because we might see certain types of cells in the urinalysis that might help us. So typically, people who have blood in the urine are referred to a urologist for a workup and sometimes to a nephrologist if we think there might be medical kidney disease. I'm Ba'al Teshuva. I became Hasidic about six months ago. And before six months ago? Music business isn't exactly known for its holiness. Heroin. But I've been clean for months. Yonatan knows. And the broad strokes. He never actually asked the details. He says what's important is the person that I am now, not the person I was then. How do you go all the way from... I just took a class. I took another class. And you just completely left the music business? Pop music is considered frivolous. Same reason we don't watch TV or go to movies. Your drug use may have caused some long-term damage. We're gonna need to take a hair sample to test for latent toxins. So you can never watch Star Wars again. So they show some of the history taking in that scene. So when you're actually talking to a patient, you want to get the entire information. So all the things I mentioned earlier, and specifically you want to find out if there are on any illicit drugs and if they're taking any herbal medications or things over the counter, because those things can have effects as well. So patients, we need to kind of get down to the root of anything that could be causing your problems, particularly when there's a diagnostic dilemma. And so they're doing the right thing by finding out more about her past life and things that she did prior to converting. How's our mental yenthal? MRI shows no sign of clots. FMRI shows no problem areas. They'll restart her IV. What's wrong with it? Nothing. But like so many procedures we put patients through, it hurts. But if she's enjoying it, will show up in pretty colors. This is why you wanted an fMRI? It showed she didn't have a blood clot, which is diagnostically relevant. And it can show that she's become a masochist, also diagnostically relevant. And it'll be cool. Either explain which part of my analysis that makes sense, or go do it. It isn't cool. Sorry. Mm. Rubbing her Heavens. Look at her limbic system. Pleasure centers lighting up like a Hanukkah bush. Foreman must have a touch like an elephant. Okay, Raz, we've got what we need. Yes, it was impressive. Roz, you all right? Oh, sorry, I was praying. All through the procedure? No, when Dr. Foreman apologized, I knew something bad was gonna happen. She was praying. Could explain the brain activity. <sighs> BP and heart rate are dropping. She's oh. crashing. house is known for its TV drama. So these sorts of things where you're doing specific tests just to find out your curiosities, it doesn't happen in medical systems because we don't have that kind of resources. Functional MRIs are very expensive. In fact, I've never ordered one and they're really not routinely done. So 
you know, to rule out masochism, I mean, that's not a thing. Also, if you're interested in learning about masochism, you can check out my video about Gray's Anatomy, where I talk about a patient who actually has what I think is masochism. So I'll link that up right here. Number one, this is, this is obviously a diagnostic team that's not typical. This is not like some sort of fellowship that really exists. So they don't, they do everything in this show. They do procedures. She said they were going to do a cystoscopy. Now they're looking at the radiology. Typically, we have specialists who do these things who are specialized in reading radiology you're specialized in, you know, doing cystoscopy like urologists. So that's a little bit different here. And also they kind of try always in this show, at least from what I recall, is to come up with some sort of crazy assertion that Dr. House has, which sometimes turns out to be right and sometimes turns out to be wrong, but they go fishing down this way and they try to treat patients before they've actually confirmed the diagnosis. That's not what happens in real life. Typically in real life, you will actually have a strong belief that something is diagnostically correct with lab values or other things that really support it, not just a hunch, and you would then treat based on those factors. Also, you wouldn't try to cause pain to a patient just to see what their response is. So again, all for TV drama, and it works. It's really dramatic, and a lot of people watch this show. That cortisol stuff is great. Hmm. Does it work on everything? I take it you're feeling better. Oh, still weak, but yeah. Oh, he must be so tired. I should go home and get some sleep. I'll stay. I never told you, but you are much better looking than Mrs. Silver led me to expect. She never liked me. When I was eight, I threw up on her shoes at my uncle's wedding. <laughs> Your abdomen's a little swollen. Mm -hmm. Is it serious? It's hard to say. Sometimes it can mean a liver issue. We'll have to test. Oh, oh, dizziness is getting... Oh. She's going to shock and need another liter of saline. Type and cross two units. Well, what's happening to her? Oh. She's bleeding internally. She's saying the Shema. She thinks she's dying. Oh, the MRA shows you're bleeding internally, but not where it's coming from. The blood can only keep you stable for so long. Our best option is to open you up and search. But you can fix it. If we find the leak. You find the bleeding, you find the disease? No. But it could keep you alive long enough so Dr. House can find what's wrong with you. No. I don't want to have the surgery. It's the only chance you've got. I don't want to have the surgery until after sunset. I'm probably going to die anyway. I just want to share one shot with my husband. Ross, please. The Torah commands us to preserve life. I think that was actually a really good description of, you know, informed consent and talking to the patient about what to expect afterwards, especially when you're doing an exploratory surgery to find a bleed. You know, you definitely may or may not be successful and it may or may not point to the actual reason that the bleed happened. So this is important to share that information. I think they did a good job of showing that and then respecting the patient's wishes. Patient autonomy is still very, very important. As long as you tell patients the risks and benefits of proceeding with a certain procedure or surgery, they have the right to say no. And we have to respect that even if we don't agree with their reasons or we don't understand them. People have all sorts of reasons for doing things. For example, Jehovah's Witnesses will not accept blood transfusions. And sometimes that is to their detriment because they might be having a big surgery, but we have to respect their wishes. And it's really important to do that. So good job, House MD, for showing that. At this point, I didn't show everything, but they've done a lot of testing. They've done a lot of various treatments and they haven't gotten down to the root cause of what's going on yet. So let's see what happens. Hey, stop that Jew. Chase hates working in Shabbos. 
gonna make this easier for him. Stand her up. She doesn't do so well on her feet. Neither do I. Stand her up. You have nephroptosis, also known as floating kidney. The kidney is like a chandelier. It's attached to a ceiling of intestines and blood vessels. It's your contractor. I think you know who he is. He hung it with a cheap chain. It's been hanging sloppy for years. Finally, something shook it loose. After that, every time you stood, your kidney dropped a few centimeters. It caused all your symptoms. None of the scans picked it up. Because we do scans with patients lying down. She's been lying down in surgery, too. We've never found it. Good chance she'd never come out. She'll be all right. Uh. Ultrasound to confirm and tell Chase to put the kidney back on the shelf. The bleed will be nearby. That's it. Muzzle off. Couple hours surgery. You'll be ready to push out those 14 children. <laughs> Y'all, there is so much drama in this show. I mean, a doctor would never scream down the hall, hey, Jew, and like the way he talks to patients is just unreal but I know it's all for TV. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about nephroptosis. So it's actually a really rare condition and it was actually the most common surgery performed by urologists at the end of the 19th century and then went out of favor. So what is nephroptosis? Is when the kidney is actually, when you're standing, drops down of greater than five centimeters of its original position. And that can cause a number of symptoms and those symptoms are called Deedle's crisis. It can be really violent, colicky flank pain, meaning pain in your flank or your side, kind of back here, that comes and goes, um, that can be really sharp and painful, just like people have sometimes when they have a kidney stone. They can also have nausea, vomiting, chills, their heart rate can go up, and sometimes they can have a drop in urine output blood in the urine or protein in the urine. The reason they think that you might have blood in the urine, there's a couple reasons. One is that maybe due to actual stretching of the renal vein that causes some bleeding from the kidney itself, or it can be due to the obstruction itself. So when the kidney kind of drops, it kinks the ureter or the tube that drains the kidney and that can cause some bleeding. And the pain that you feel or people who have nephroptosis feel is because one of the mechanical obstruction, like I described with the ureter getting kinked, or it can be due to some traction on the nerves around the kidney that causes some discomfort, or because you're pulling on the renal artery, it can cause some decreased blood flow to the kidney causing pain itself. So that's exactly what's going on here. And the treatment of this is to attack the kidney up into the renal fossa or the place the kidney normally belongs. So in the past, and historically, they used to treat this conservatively. So they used to try to place corsets or abdominal binders on people who had it. This most often presents in slim women on the right side. So 70% of cases are on the right side. So back in the early 1800s, people were actually using corsets, although they didn't really work very well. Because this was the most commonly performed surgery, it was performed for lots of indications that weren't true nephroptosis. And so patients would actually have poor outcomes after surgery because people weren't treating anything and so it fell out of favor. Nowadays, it's extremely uncommon. You have to have a high degree of suspicion. You do have to do imaging both lying and sitting up. And again, like Dr. House mentions, that's not something that we typically do. So you do need to specify that you need that sort of imaging to diagnose it. And then the treatment is pretty much straightforward these days because now we can do it laparoscopically. And so the incisions are smaller and the recovery is quicker than it used to be back in the 19th century. So I hope you learned something today and enjoyed this episode. Make sure you let me know if there's anything else you want me to react to down in the comments below. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.